Welcome to the Cashflow Guys Podcast. Join Tyler and his team as they unlock the secrets to achieving financial independence through wealth building strategies inspired by Robert Kiyosaki and other thought provoking leaders. Learn to build leveraged streams of cash flow that land in your pocket and improve your quality of life. Gain access to cutting edge ideas that will increase your productivity and streamline your success. Find out how to supercharge your retirement plan so you won't have to retire with a pay cut. You can escape the rat race. Are you ready? It's time to learn to earn with Tyler Chef. Welcome to Cashflow Guys Podcast. It's that time again. It's Friday morning. I hope you're up, you're out of bed. You're looking to take things to the next level. Today, I have got a great guest for you. He happens to be the host of the Real Estate Mogul Podcast, Tom Caffarella. I got that right, didn't I, Tom? Absolutely. Not too many people do, but you hit it, hit it right in the nail around the head. I got to tell you, Tom, with a name like Chef, that really gets interpreted like Sheffer, Sheffield, Chief, Shife, <laughs> and every other thing. It's like, no, man, Chef. It's real simple. S-H-E-F-F. Uh, I'm I'm particularly sensitive to that, so I try oh, to make come sure. Come on, come on! <laughs> I try to make sure people uh, I get people's name right whenever I can. But cool. uh, so, welcome to the show. You're from Boston, and uh, you are the you co-founded Ocean City Development, which is a real estate development or investment company based out of Boston. Mm -hmm. And it says here you've got 500 properties over the last five years to flip. Yes. Absolutely. And and a good number to buy and hold as well. So we've got it over a 300 unit rental property portfolio. Nice. And I hear a little bird told me that you have, in my opinion, this is what I was told, mastered the art of marketing as far as it goes for real estate, which is impressive. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show. because I want to talk about the secrets that you picked up in marketing and how that will benefit the audience, if that's all right with you. Awesome. Looking forward to it. So just to jump right in, everybody wants motivated seller leads. You mm -hmm. use, and, and there's all kinds of sources out there. Obviously, we've got people use direct mail, like, uh, bandit signs, all kinds of good stuff. But you figured it out on Facebook. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, Facebook to me is one of the best marketing mediums there is out there right now. Facebook knows every single thing about us. I mean, if you think about it, they know your name, they know what you like, they know whether you're married. And the other thing about Facebook is not only are you constantly putting in information about yourself into Facebook, but Facebook then is also a data aggregator, which means that they will take their data, they'll take all the fields that you've put in, and then they'll run it against other data sources. So what that means for us as real estate investors is not only do they know whether you like cats or dogs or you know how old you are or what your job is, they also know whether or not you own a home. And based on the behaviors in Facebook, they also know if you don't own a home, whether you're likely to think about being um, a homeowner. And they also know whether or not you may be thinking about selling your home. So it's pretty crazy that there's never been in recorded history this much data about different people. And we can use that to our advantage on Facebook. It's scary. It's scary. Kind of if you think about it, how much Facebook knows about you, that's for sure. It, they know they know more about us than our spouses. They know more about us than, than anybody. So, yeah, it is kind of scary. But, you know, from a marketing perspective, it is one of the best things in the world. So for clarity, as somebody that's not a Facebook ad expert, which I clearly am not, the, yep. you're using Facebook ads and yes. you're using the targeted features within the Facebook system mm -hmm. and all that information that you just talked about, that they know literally everything about you, you're able to harness the power of that information and then use it to get high, highly targeted leads, correct? In other words, if you want somebody that drives a, a blue car and plays golf and might buy a house and zip code, whatever, you can pretty much plug that in, correct? That's exactly right. And as an investor, what the first thing that we do is we want to build our seller avatar. And what I mean by an avatar is basically what are the characteristics about the person who sells a home to a motivated, uh, who sells a home to an investor? And there's specific demographic information and behavioral information of people that are more likely to sell to an investor. 
once we know what that avatar is, once we know the characteristics of that avatar, and by the way, that avatar is going to be different if we're trying to generate a buyer lead versus a seller lead versus um, you know land or whatever we're looking to target. But once we know that, we then literally simply go into Facebook, we select out all of the information that we want to put out there. And the beauty of Facebook, as opposed to TV or radio or any other type of marketing medium, is we only pay to put our ads in front of the people who we want to reach. So if we run a TV ad, 95% or probably more of the people that we're actually gonna pay to reach have no interest in our product and are not our target demographic. We're on Facebook, we can cut our marketing budget down because of the fact that we're only paying to put ads in the news feeds of the people that we really want to reach. Okay, I see. So you instead of the shotgun approach, you know, like you like you use the comparison of the TV station where you're applying to you're you're basically paying a fee based on the reach that you're putting out with TV or any sort of medium, whether it be direct mail or whatever, you're only paying really to show to the right people. You're not you're not paying for the volume of showing to the wrong people. Exactly. And that's that's really, to me, the, the beauty of Facebook. And there are, you know, important components outside of that. So that's just the targeting piece. Obviously, once we run the ad, it's like any other ad that we are running on TV or radio or a mailer. We can make sure that the marketing message is the right marketing message. And we also have to make sure that the image, which is one of the most important things about running a Facebook ad, is the right image. Because when people are on Facebook, they're not going on Facebook to sell their home. They're going on Facebook to look at pictures of their neighbor or their aunt or you know somebody else's kids. So we actually have to make sure that the image and the message that we have stops them from what they're typically doing on Facebook. Interesting. So how did you learn how to do this? I mean, is this, you just want to hire an agency or you, is this something you kind of developed as a pet project or what's that look like? I developed it as a pet project myself at first. Um, which is probably not the way I would recommend that anybody do it. I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of finding people who know what they're doing and paying them to do it. In this, in this specific instance, I just trial and error a lot of it myself. But now I don't do any of it myself within my own business. I have somebody that just runs the ads for me. Because the other thing about Facebook that's a little bit different than a mailer or about you know other forms, I mean, every form of marketing has different kind of things that you need to know. But with Facebook, Facebook's biggest fear is if you're running an ad that the people who are seeing the ad hate the ad. Oh, so okay. when an ad shows up in a news feed and somebody clicks that they want to hide it, Facebook heavily penalizes you. And the more the percentage of people that hide the ad, the less likely it is that Facebook is actually going to show that ad to people. So Facebook will actually, no matter how much money you want to give them, if people really hate the ad, they're not going to show it because the worst thing for Facebook is to lose their users. So if you're trying to run an ad and everybody hates it, well, they would rather just not even really show that ad. They would rather take the money from another advertiser to show something else. So the ads need to be consistently looked at. And there's something called the relevancy score that actually measures how how much people want to see the actual ad that you're putting out. So your ad has to, to fit kind of and speak to the person that you're showing the ad to. Yeah, that's actually impressive. What you just said is I never really put that two and two together that Facebook is is smart enough or savvy enough to really care about what ads I see. So Absolutely. The, so the quality of the ad experience is better, therefore a better experience for me on Facebook. I'm more likely to click on those ads. Now it's starting to make sense to me. So that's interesting because every once in a while I do I do click on those. It's, this is not relevant to me. I don't need another widget for a, a Dumaflagi. So I, I'll go ahead and, and mark that off. as. So I guess what I'm saying is, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, it seems like an effective use of your advertising dollar, Facebook, because I haven't heard of too many other mediums where they're necessarily focused on your uh, success, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Facebook, their number one thing is if you if you decide I'm not going to log into Facebook because I'm tired of seeing that widget ad over and over, that's the big loss to them. Because right. for you, there's a there's the lifetime value of the ads that are going to be put in front of you. And that lifetime value is very high. So they don't want to take you off of Facebook and on to, you know, another social media platform because you were getting irritated. Oh, that makes very good sense. It certainly does. 
What, what kind of message have you found if you could just pick one marketing message that motivated sellers will respond to? You know, there, there's nothing really complex about the marketing message. I mean, it's the typical sell your house fast for cash. But one thing that we really like to do, again, to make sure that the user is, is, is being heavily targeted is we'll break it down by cities. So you're in Tampa, right? Right. Okay, so we'll do simple things like the message instead of saying sell your house fast for cash will be sell your sell your Tampa house fast for cash. And the URL that we're putting will be sellhousefasttampa.com. Simple, simple things like that make a big difference because, again, you really want that when they're scrolling through their news feed, you almost don't want to make it seem like it's an actual ad and you want it to be specifically talking to them. So the other thing about Facebook ads, there's there's the image, right? So the image is going to stop them. And the image that stops them, again, is not necessarily, you know, a picture of a house or anything like that. You actually need to test various images against each other. So the cool thing about Facebook when you're talking about figuring out what works is the process of split testing is very easy. So what you want to do when you're running Facebook ads is you want to run multiple ads against each other. And say that you have a $10 a day budget, instead of putting all $10 to one ad, you want to put a dollar a day to 10 different ads. And then you want to track over the course of time, which ones are generating you the most amount of leads. And then the ones that are working the best, you want to scale up and put more money behind. So there's no definite answer on, you know, a specific image. Um, So that's why you want to test a bunch of different things to see what's working and what's working today may not work in six months. And that's kind of why you really need someone to manage the ads for you because the very basic, how do you get your first ad up and running and working well, isn't that difficult. It's more of the management on the back end of making sure that that ad is still working and you're still getting the cost per lead that you need. I see. Yeah, that's good advice. Absolutely. What, um, with that, I see services out there. There's one of them. I can't think of the name of it offhand. It's something like real estate agent directory or something or other, but what it does is it puts up, these random photographs of these really nice kitchens or really nice backyards that are almost dreamlike, right? And I, every time I see those, I think, and this made me think of this when you're talking about the image, I just think it's cheesy. Like if I'm a home buyer and I'm looking in the $60,000 price range and I see a half million dollar kitchen, a lot of people get turned off by that. Any, yep. any feedback? I mean, how do you know? Is it just trial and error with photographs? I mean, I, I imagine that's quite a challenge getting a photograph that will convert. It. It really it is trial and error, but it's not that challenging, though, because, again, you're going to run a bunch of different ads against each other. So it doesn't take that long. I mean, the, the beauty of Facebook as again, opposed to, say, a radio ad or a TV ad or even a mailer is you get instant feedback. So if, if you're running your ads the right way, you should be generating leads within the first couple of days of running the ads. So if you're generating leads within the first couple of days of running ads and you're running a bunch of different competing ads to get against each other within a month, you should be able to figure it out. I mean, realistically, once you start to get good within a week, you know, if an ad is working. But I'm saying conservatively in the beginning, you know, a month is plenty of time to figure out what's working and what's not working. And really, you want to try everything. And and you can spend, like I said, you can spend as little as a dollar a day. So you d- you don't need to to go crazy spending a ton of money until you figure out what has worked. Interesting. Yeah, I can see how if you know if you're not paying attention, so to speak. Going back to what you're talking about earlier about there's one thing about getting the ad up, but then there's the back end of it that, that we really got to kind of babysit things. I for one have been that guy where oh, I get an ad up, it, it it's converting. I'm spending money and then I kind of forget about it and, yep. <laughs> and suddenly Facebook's still charging and it's not converting. It's like, uh Oh, what's, you know, a few hundred dollars later. I'm like, ouch. But, uh, and, the, and the problem with that for most people is when they start to think, Oh, Facebook doesn't work. And people think that, you know, with any medium, once they start to take their eye off the ball. Right. Right. So, so you've, you, you know, this, that's more of just a system thing and making sure that you're doing your highest, you know, dollar per hour activity. And really managing Facebook ads for most people isn't the highest dollar per hour activity. And there's a lot of activation energy and a lot of learning on trying to figure out what to do, which is why for most people, it just doesn't make sense to do it. But it's also why there's a competitive advantage on that versus, say, running a mailer, because 
running a mailer is pretty simple, right? Almost anybody can do it. There's not a lot of management that goes into the back end of it. So the the new rookie doesn't have to to learn anything, which is why the cost per lead on mailers keeps going up and up and up because there's so much competition. Most people do exactly what you said. They'll try to run a Facebook ad for a week or two weeks. The cost per lead will get out of control and then they'll just purge the campaign altogether and then not even come back to it. So to some degree, it's a lot like like you'd said with direct mail is that it gets it just starts getting, they lose interest after a while. Like, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of investors that have said, well, I spent all this money in direct mail. How much did you spend? I spent a thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Well, how many mails did you send? Um, I sent a thousand. Well, you mean you only mailed it once? Yeah. Okay. So you got to do it more than once. <laughs> and I, and I, and I think that just kind of goes back to some, you know, to the expectation of what, what you need for a marketing budget and what you need to do in order to be successful as a real estate investor. You know, if you if you don't have a decent marketing budget set aside, it's difficult to be successful with paid marketing. Now, there are plenty of things that you can do that are unpaid. But if you've only got 500 bucks or a thousand bucks to spend on paid marketing, it almost to me doesn't even make sense to do it because the odds of you getting results are so low. I would rather somebody, you know, spend that 500 or a thousand dollars on bandit signs or you know, things that they can do that are more organic because they're not going to get the bang for their buck if they try to run a Google pay-per-click or a Facebook ad or a mailer campaign with with a limited amount of budget behind it. So that brings me to with the digital element, what should you, let's say you're an investor that wants to, I don't know, flip houses, for example. Uh, what type of budget do you think you should set aside before you start get started? You're just a average, you're a beginning investor. You don't have a massive budget. Um, you're going to probably use some hard money, maybe a little bit of private money to flip houses or some of your own cash. What kind of budget would you think you would set aside as a good go-to rate? Realistically, to me, the bare minimum budget is going to be somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars. I would, I would love it to be less than that, um, but I don't think that that's realistic in this environment because you've got people like me who are spending over a million dollars a year on marketing every single year. And it's very difficult to compete with somebody like that. You know, if I'm sending them 10, 10 mailers in a year and then you send them one, who's are they more likely to respond to? So, I, so I, I think you have to look on day one to see, are you capitalized enough to have a marketing budget? If you're not, that's totally okay. You can go to all the non-paid things and, you know, put sweat equity into it and get deals that way. But if you've got a thousand or two thousand dollars, to me, there's just not a lot that you can be you can do with that. And, you know, if you can't do anything with it, you don't want to rely on the fact that that's going to get you a deal. You don't want to say, OK, let me spend fifteen hundred dollars on marketing and I'm going to get a deal. And then you don't get a deal and then you're discouraged and you don't take any other action. So if you've got a really limited marketing budget, there's tons of things that you can do. But um, I wouldn't rely on paid marketing to get you there. So basically use the the freeware, or the, the lower cost options to build up your revenue stream. So you're basically saying setting aside some money for marketing so you can build that up. In other words, scale to the point to where when you're ready to supercharge, you got 10K set aside. Let's say you've done, you're one of those rare flippers that's done enough flips and you've actually made a profit and you can hang, you know, set aside 10, 15 grand or 5, 10, 15 grand, whatever. Um, at that point, go ahead and pull the trigger on the digital. Yeah. And if you, and if you have it right out of the gate, I mean, either way, to get a really good deal in this market, you're either going to spend time or money. Right. So if you've got the money, I would spend the money. If you don't have the money, you've got to spend the time. Um, you know, if there's anyone out there who who can show me how to get these incredible deals without spending time or money, um, I definitely would like a you know a direct connection to them. Exactly. I would like to develop that software, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's unfortunate because some people kind of pitch it that way. You don't really have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to really spend a lot of time. But I mean, to do anything substantial in life, you've got to put in time, effort, and energy. Exactly. And I, I just did a, a, I'm in the middle of a 10 week mastermind right now. I've got a, a bunch of students going through that process. And I had a few people, I interviewed people before I brought them in. And what I found is that an overwhelming amount of people are like, you mean I got to wait 10 weeks to, to get results? I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, you got to actually, I got to, it doesn't, you don't just pay and uh, suddenly become wealthy. You actually have to do a lot of work. And it takes longer than 10 weeks. I've got news for you. Because uh, this is not an overnight business, but people still, and it blows my mind because this ties right into what we're talking about. People still expect these instant results. Ooh, I went to 
yellow letters and I sent, I spent a thousand dollars on yellow letters and I'm waiting, but I haven't hit my first million yet. It's been a week. So what's the problem? <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, I think that just goes back to expectations. I mean, it's a life, if it's a, it's a lifelong commitment, you, you've got to dedicate yourself. If you, if you really want to be good at anything, you've got to learn as much as you can, you know, learn to earn type of thing. Right. And the learning process never stops. I mean, I'm sure for you, you're learning new things every day, as am I. And I'm always pushing to to sharpen my skills and to get better. And there are people that are 10 steps ahead of where I'm at. And I'm looking at them saying, hey, how do I get to that level? And in order to get to that level, you've just got to dedicate yourself. Exactly. And that's, yeah, you're absolutely correct there. Talk about, um, I, I noticed, I don't see a lot of the billboards I see lately, at least in my market. And we have a pretty robust real estate market down here in Florida. I'm seeing billboards becoming kind of a thing of the past. I'm not seeing people really spending money on billboards. Any comments on that? It's funny because I, I just put up a bunch of billboards, but the reason that I put them up is not to lead generate. It's more for brand recognition. And yeah. And so, I mean, I spend so much money on mailing and cold calling and Google AdWords and Facebook ads that that's just another, you know, basically, you know, thing that will make it a homeowner say, Oh, they're a legitimate company type of thing. But for the average person spending money on billboards is going to be a huge waste of resources because even for, you know, every market is a little bit different, but typically speaking, you're going to spend a thousand or $2,000 a month on a billboard at a minimum. And then obviously if you get a really, you know, high traffic one, it's going to be even more than that. They just don't grab people's attention. I mean, let me ask you this. The last time you were at a red light, where were you looking? Uh, probably my phone. <laughs> at your phone. And you know what's funny? I, I hate to people, say that. But... I ask people that all the time, and everyone pauses, and most people actually lie to me and say it's not their phone that they're looking at. Yeah. But, it, but it's their phone. And the funny thing about billboards is let's say that you were at a bus station and the billboard was right up in front of you. You would still be looking at your phone. Yeah. So so outdoor media outdoor media in general is is dying because of the fact that we've got this incredible entertainment device that we can literally get anything, you know, the the wishes of our, you know, information and entertainment are literally a click away. So why are we going to, you know, look at a billboard when when we have that? And and so it's so it's combined how expensive it is with the fact that the eyeballs aren't there, you know, why spend money there? And by the way, that person who is, you know, checking their phone at a red light, where are they probably on? At least 50% of the time, they're probably on Facebook. So why not put your your ads where the eyeballs actually are, right? So as a marketer, you don't really care what the medium is. I mean, if people's eyes were on billboards all day long, I'd be spending a bunch of money on billboards. But we've got to put our ads up in front of where people are actually looking. And as of right now, people's eyes are on Facebook. In five years, that might be a different medium, but that's where they are today. So that's where I'm going to spend the bulk of my money today. So kind of off off the cuff, what? how do you know who's correct when you're trying to figure out where the eyeballs are? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can go to Facebook and I think to myself, but yeah, I, am I going to take Facebook's opinion because they're the ones, they, they want my money. So mm -hmm. who, could you recommend some trusted resources of Who's really in the know in this stuff? Who's following the pulse of this? Is it like a Gary Vee type of situation or what's that look like? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, Gary Vee is unbelievable when it comes to social media and promoting yourself on social media, but not necessarily running ads. At least from my understanding, he's not really talking about running ads. I think right. Gary Vee Gary v is more you produce content and people are going to see that valuable content and then they're going to go to you as a resource. Um, in terms of running ags, like I run ags for investors, um, another good person, um, to follow it, his name is Grant Wise and he's got a program that's specific for investors as well. He's got some really good content on Facebook ads. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know if anybody else who runs ads specifically for Facebook, the way I actually learned how to run ads was through a company called, um, traffic and funnels and they teach people how to run ads in order to like attract coaching clients, which I, I have a coaching business as well. Right. And all of the strategies that they taught helped me to run my, my actual real estate Facebook ads, but that wouldn't necessarily be a one-to-one -one kind of thing. So Grant Wise has a program that's specific for real estate investors and he'll run ads for you. Like I'll run ads for you. And, um, you know, he trains on that as well. Interesting. But my, my question, and that was great. The, as far as a, a, an influencer, Grant, 
is kind of the guy that will tell you like this week if it's if Facebook is converting better than Instagram, let's say, is does he provide that kind of information? Is that kind of what his thing or his thing is Facebook. Okay. So I mean, for me, I've always found that I'm just testing out all the mediums constantly. So I, I have a good enough marketing budget where I'm saying, hey, if something seems like it's producing well, um, you know, I'll try it. I'm also in a bunch of different mastermind groups, which I mean, they're invaluable. I mean, the people who are in your mastermind group, I mean, that's to me one of the biggest ways to kind of get information because somebody can sell you a product like even grant who's specific to facebook and if somebody's selling you a facebook product you know they're going to want you to use facebook right but where i found the most benefit is getting into a group of people 10 15 20 people who are national who will who will be willing to share ideas with you and who are who are also testing different things so the, the group I'm in, I'm always testing different things. If something's working for me, I'll put it into the group. Hey, you know, this is working and, you know, you should try it or, you know, someone else might do that as well. I think that's one of the, the easiest shortcuts is just to find a group of people that are out there doing it. And a lot of times, if you if you have any sort of idea, whether it's marketing or hiring, a you know, staff or, or finding a good agent or something like that. A lot of times, if you're in the right group, it could be as simple as just asking a question and you might have five or 10 people in your group that have already done it. Interesting. That's good stuff, because one of the, that's one of the things that it can easily overwhelm. I know a lot of especially a lot of new investors. Well, heck, I'm not a new investor. And sometimes I get overwhelmed by that. It's like, what do you which medium do I use? There's Snapchat, Facebook. This, that, the other. Oh my God. And it it changes every day. So you can't, that's the, that's the reason why the masterminding is so powerful because it's very difficult in today's world to actually keep on top of everything yourself. Um, and, and, you know, the, the second there's sometimes where people will bring software and tools and resources to my attention that I've never even heard of. And they're saying, Oh, if you, have you tried this yet? And it's not even like I've even ever heard of the, you know, the software or the system or the tool. And, all of a sudden it's something that I incorporate into my own business. Oh, that's good stuff, man. I, yeah, that's real good stuff. Good advice. Good advice. And you actually provide, so you can, you have a company where you want one of the businesses that you own is you sell leads to investors or you provide them that service. What does that look like kind of in a nutshell? Yeah. So uh, this is specifically for Facebook. So we, we have basically two parts to it. One is that we're going to actually give you the lead. So we're going to run the marketing campaigns for you. And then the second piece of it is we're going to provide you the tools, the training and the support to actually work the leads. So the, the lead generation itself is important. Um, it's half the battle. Yes. But if you don't know how to work the leads, if you don't know how to talk to a seller, if you don't have a CRM to put those leads into, a lot of times you're just going to spend money and waste it. So what we do is we provide both. And so that's just as simple as, you know, signing up with us, getting started, and then you will set a marketing budget for you in your market. And like I said, we, we really, if you have under, you know, five to $10,000 for us, the first thing I'm going to say to you is you should probably go to an unpaid marketing source. But if you do have a marketing budget, then we're going to help set that for you. And then once we set it, the leads are going to be guaranteed. I mean, we we have a good enough scope uh, and have done this enough for enough people around the country that we know how many leads roughly we're going to generate. But that part is easy. The, the harder part is then getting people trained on how to work leads, getting them to meet face to face with sellers. How do you calculate and make offers? How do you get deals funded? How do you wholesale them if you get something and you don't want to rehab it yourself? and all that good stuff. Good stuff. I like what you said about meeting so a seller's wholesale or face to face. That's one of the things that I teach as well. And then unfortunately our society is we all want to try to do it with our cell phone <laughs> using a text message or something like that. And it's like, oh, oh no. Guys, um, that's not how we negotiate. <laughs> Ab absolutely not because if you negotiate over a text message, what they're going to do is they're going to bring that text message to the next investor and say, "Hey, look, see what offer I have?" Right? So we have a specific sales process that we follow each and every time. And we say to people, you don't have to follow it, but I guarantee your results will decrease if you don't follow it. So you can kind of do things however you want, but the formula that we have is, you know, been developed over the course of 10 years. And when I say developed, I don't mean like we actually thought about it. We just trialed and errored it to the point where now we just know what the right things to do are. Good stuff. And that's the key. And that's what I love about training is 
people say, well, they, they complain about the cost of training and cost of education, this, that, and the other. But it's like, well, you know, how about don't get educated? What's the cost of that? <laughs> you know, the, the, co- the cost of not getting educated for, for most people is either one of two things. Number one, they never do anything. Exactly. Right? So, so they, they go out there, they try to do it themselves. They don't have the confidence. They get a deal or they're close to getting a deal and then they don't pull the trigger because they're not sure what to do. Yep. Or they go the opposite way and they don't get educated and they're just so headstrong that they do a deal just to do a deal and then they lose money. They, there's almost nobody I've ever seen that, that didn't have some sort of mentorship that went the third path, which is you do it yourself and you're super successful out of the gate. Um, cause there's no blueprint for this business. I mean, I was a CPA before I, I got into real estate and as a CPA, they told me where to go, what to do. And I knew exactly what I needed to do to get promoted as a, as a new real estate investor. There are so many different things that you need to learn how to get good at. And unfortunately there's not somebody that's going to be telling you what to do every single day. And there's not going to be somebody where you can call and say, Hey, is this a, a deal I can pull the trigger on unless you do get a mentor? So what I say to people when I talk to them about finding a mentor, I'll say, you don't have to work with me, but you have to work with somebody for sure. Absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. And, I, and I'm actually proud of the fact that I've used mentors to help me get to where I am. I've, and not I just one. Mentors. Absolutely. I, still pay, I, I still pay people. Now, it won't be a mentor that'll, you know, uh, you know, there are mentors for every specific part of, of your business. And I just talked about a mentor of mine. Um, that helped me learn how to do the Facebook ads. So I know how to do those now. Now I don't need that mentor, but there are other parts of my business that I do need a mentor on. So I, I'll, I'll pay between five and $10,000 a month for coaching programs and it's worth it all day long. Oh yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Because you know, what's the, what's the alternative? Like you said, not taking any action, not getting anything accomplished, not getting anything done or worse making mistakes as we all know in real estate can happen and they're never cheap mistakes. A friend of mine calls them seminars, making those, well, having those uh, $20,000 seminars <laughs> because you goofed. So I'm not that old. I'm 35 years old. And depending upon, you know, how old your listeners are, they might say, Hey, he's still a young guy. Or they might say, Oh, he's, he's getting up there in age. Right. But I, I'll say this. I've got three kids. I've got a four year old, a one and a half year old and a five month old. I don't want to wait to to do things the right way like i'm smart enough that i can figure things out on my own but i don't want to take a year to do what i could do in three months so to me it's all about shortcutting it you know if i want to have the time by the time my kids are you know five years old to to not work i you know i want to have that ability i never will because i love what i do but i'm saying i want to shortcut things as much as possible absolutely and that's fantastic advice right there because I mean, really, and, and when you say shortcut, it's not like you're you're cutting out the quality of the work that you do. No. You're just reducing the amount of time by taking the time to educate yourself. So you're making less mistakes, which means when you're out there taking action, you're getting more wins. Yep, exactly. I mean, like I said, if like we're not in this business, we're not putting a man on the moon. Nothing right. we do, nothing, nothing that works hasn't been tried by somebody else. So why try to recreate the wheel when you can just go to somebody who's already done it and say, how do I do X, Y, Z? Exactly. You know? exactly. And sometimes I, I, sometimes I look for coaches and I can't even find a coach that will get me the answers to things. That's almost my biggest struggle now is if I want to do something that's super niche, trying to find the right person who does have the answers. But at the beginning level, there are so many resources for people um, that, that will have great information because it's more generalized in nature. Absolutely. And nothing better than word, word of mouth. You, know, you get out there, you ask a lot of questions and eventually that person will, what does they say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But Tom, thank you so much for coming on the show. You provided a ton of value. I think you gave us a lot to think about If people want to reach out to you, what's the best method to reach out to you to maybe talk to you about the next level or anything else they want to learn? The best way is just to to put your email into the webinar that I have. Now, okay. regardless of whether or not you want to actually watch the webinar, if you put your email in, you'll get on my email list and you'll get my direct email. Okay. Um, so the best way to do that is to go to www.realestateinvestingiseasy.com. Again, that's www.realestateinvestingiseasy.com. And if you put your email in, then you'll get then you'll get my email back automatically. And there'll be a webinar. You can watch it or you can ignore it if you want. But then you'll you'll have a direct link to me. 
Okay, sounds great. So once again, that's realestateinvestingiseasy.com. I will make sure that's in the show notes, realestateinvestingiseasy.com. And Tom, thank you so much for coming out and adding value to the audience. I know I learned a couple things. I wrote down some good notes. I'm sure everybody else did as well. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Tyler. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap this week's episode there. I want you to make sure that you take some action. Get on. Here's the thing. There's no such thing as an, enough action. So let's start today by taking some action. Get on over to realestateinvestingiseasy.com. Get on his email list. Listen to the webinar. If you come away with one new thing, two, three, four, five new things, it is worth the investment of time. We all don't know it all, but we got to start our journey by taking action. Here's your opportunity to do so. Uh, lastly, if you're not a member of our Facebook group, make sure you get over to cashflowguys.com forward slash group and join the Facebook community. You can reach out with me, guests on the show and whatnot there, get your questions answered. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Thank you for having us and have a great time. This concludes today's episode. You don't have to wait till the next episode to learn to earn. Head over to CashFlowGuys.com and contact Tyler and his team for more powerful tips and ideas. So you can start generating multiple streams of income and escape the rat race.